Good morning. Thank you all of you for joining us. Welcome to this webinar focusing on rollover prevention strategies. We would like to thank FCC for funding our webinar series project. We would also like to, to welcome our guest speaker, Jim Wasserman, from Prairie Agricultural Machinery Institute. Thank you, Jim. Thanks, Vanita. Yeah, so I look forward to this topic. It's been an area where I've spent uh, a number of years working, so uh, glad to share this information with everyone. So as uh, Benita mentioned, uh, today we'll be talking about ROPS rollover protective systems and how they can prevent uh, injury and fatalities from rollovers and certain runovers. Uh, we'll give some background information and statistics, then move on to talking about uh, some examples of uh, some incidents, which I think uh, will become a very useful uh, training technique to develop a, a safe mentality around uh, the use of ROPS. We'll talk about some resources on uh, how farmers can obtain ROPS and uh, some safe practices to, uh, to coincide with the use of ROPS, and then we'll wrap up with some conclusions. So a little bit of background is that uh, although uh, uh, fatalities and injuries from rollover are not highly common. They have a high potential for causing death and disabling injuries when they do occur. So any prevention effort uh, will definitely have a high payback value. Some of the useful stats from the Canadian Agricultural Injury Reporting System, also called CARE, uh, first of all, identifies that tractors are the number one cause of farm fatalities. So on the pie graph, you'll see that 43% uh, of farm fatalities are related to tractors. Another stat by CARE also talks about uh, rollover and runover injuries. Once again, you'll see that in this case, uh, Runovers uh, lead the pack by just a little bit. Rollovers are a very close second. So again, both of those uh, uh, certainly could uh, reduce or eliminate uh, the associated risk from those types of incidents. And then this breakdown uh, further illustrates the benefits. So naturally, um, rollovers um, uh, lead the pack when you when you break down the mechanism of injury. Um, secondly, dismounted operators run over by an unmanned machine. Uh, that's not necessarily prevented by ROPS, but the one right underneath it, a fall from a tractor, then run over. Uh, if a person uh, uses a combined ROPS and seatbelt, uh, those types of injuries would be prevented. So just some good solid stats on, on the benefits of ROPS used in conjunction with the seatbelt. Another good reminder is that uh, just that uh, what we typically used to call accidents are probably not that accidental. You know, we think of them as maybe freak events or carelessness, but research has actually identified that there's identifi identifiable risk factors and that they are predictable and quite preventable. So we have moved to use the term incidents, which just helps us uh, develop the proper mentality on uh, prevention of uh, these types of incidents. We'll run through uh, three case studies. Uh, these have been developed by the Agricultural Health and Safety Network, and they're a great illustration of um, some past incidents that have occurred uh, that would have been uh, prevented by ROPS and by seatbelts. And they also um, provide a, a great tool on, again, how to develop a safe mentality. Uh, so these are actual in incidents that did occur on Canadian farms, but the, the name of victim, date, and location are fictitious. So the first case study we'll talk about is uh, Mark. 
So at age 18, he had finished high school and had been accepted as a student by the College of Engineering at the University of Quebec. He was excited when he was hired as a summer laborer near his home in Quebec by a hog operation undergoing an expansion. The wages would help fund the expense of his coming year at university. Raised on a farm, Mark brought a wide range of skills to the job. Jacques, the crew boss to whom Mark reported, where she had another five summer workers just like him. On July 10th, Mark was operating a John Deere tractor which was towing a flatbed trailer loaded with lumber for the new hog barn. Going downhill on a gravel road, he lost control of the tractor. The tractor went over the edge of the road and overturned, pinning him under the rear tire. The tractor did not have a rollover protective structure or seat belt, and the trailer had no brakes. When emergency personnel freed him from the wreckage, Mark was breathing but unconscious. He died of head injury six weeks later in hospital. The accident investigation revealed the load being towed exceeded the tractor's rated safe weight. So um, it's very useful to conduct an analysis on that. And uh, uh, the Ag, Ag uh, Health and Safety Network has developed a, a system of looking at the immediate cause, possible contributing factors, and then the basic sy systemic cause which is what, which one thing could have prevented a similar incident. So if we look at the um, immediate cause going downhill on a gravel road, towing a heavy load, the tractor operator lost control of the tractor, resulting in a side overturn. Human factors, there was limited experience towing heavy loads, lack of awareness of similar incidents. Mechanical factors, the heavy load, no independent trailer brakes, and no rollover protective structure or seat belt. Environmental factors, there was a hill uh, and a gravel road. However, when we look at the one thing which could prevent a similar incident, never use a tractor that is too small to handle the load being pulled. If the load exceeds the tractor's rated safe weight, the trailer should have independent brakes. In addition to that, if uh, that tractor would have been equipped with a ROPS and a seat belt, previous research said that the operator would have still uh, been safe through that incident. Let's look at a second case study. So this is Lewis. So, um, Hank and his son Jake run a market garden operation in Ontario's Niagara Peninsula. They hire seasonal help to help pick, wash and pack the produce. Their workers come mainly from Mexico and the West Indies. On April 94, Lewis, a new employee, age 25, was helping Jake unload an international harvester caterpillar tractor from the flat deck of a truck. As the employee started the tractor and put it in gear, the tractor lurched forward and began to slide sideways off the ramp. He was not wearing a seat belt and jumped off to the right, but the tractor simultaneously ro rolled to the right and pinned him underneath its gas tank. Lewis was pronounced dead on arrival at hospital. The coroner's report listed a crushing injury of the chest as the cause of death. Hank and Jake were questioned by the Ontario police officers and by an inspector from the Department of Labour. They stated it was difficult to communicate with Lewis, who spoke little in English. When hired, Lewis had claimed through a translator he had experience as a tractor operator. Hank and Jake could produce no documentation that the employee had received instruction or supervision in tractor operation. So again, looking at the immediate cause, a Caterpillar tractor being unloaded from a flat deck truck by ramp lurched forward as it was started and slid off the ramp, crushing the operator as he tried to jump clear. Uh, what were the possible contributing factors? Well, the human factors, the owner's failure to verify 
new employee skills before assigning him to operate hazardous equipment, failure to provide training, and failure to provide supervision. For the operator, there was lack of knowledge and experience, limited English skills, misrepresentation of his previous experience, and failure to wear a seatbelt. Mechanically, there were no side guards on the ramp. So what was the one thing that uh, could prevent a similar incident? It's to ensure that powered mobile equipment is operated only by a competent operator. Um, if such an incident were to occur and the tractor was equipped with ROPS and the seat belt was used, once again, research suggests that no injuries would have occurred. We'll go on to our third case study. So this is Jerry, aged 53, operated a mixed grain and livestock farm with his wife, Maxine, and son, Brent, in the Caribou region of central BC. On July 15, uh, 1992, Jerry was mowing grass with a case tractor, pulling a PTO-driven rotary mower. He was angry that Brent had taken vacation during haying season, leaving him alone on the farm at a busy time. It was a hot, humid afternoon, and because he was steamed up about all the chores ahead of him, he had several beers at lunch. Jerry was mowing around some trees on a slope when a low tree branch knocked him off the tractor. He became entangled in the mower and was dragged 30 feet. Maxine discovered his body at the scene of the mishap when she went to check why he wasn't home for supper. The autopsy report indicated the victim had an elevated blood alcohol level at the time of death and that head and spinal injuries were the cause of death. The accident investigation noted the tractor had no rollover protective structure or seat belt. So what was the immediate cause of the incident? The tractor operator failed to notice a tree branch in his immediate vicinity and was knocked off the tractor and entangled in the rotary mower. What were the human factors? Well, there was anger, alcohol impairment, and uh, the male body just has a high center of gravity, so is easily dislodged. Mechanically, there was no rollover protective structure or seat belt, and secondly, it was an older tractor where noise, vibration, and fumes could have caused fa fatigue and distract the operator. Environmental factors was operating in a on a slope around trees. So what was the one thing that could have prevented a similar incident, which is never operate equipment under the influence of alcohol or medications that affect alertness, balance, or judgment? Once again, had such an incident occurred with a ROPS and a seat belt, uh, research indicates that the operator would have stayed on the tractor, that the ROPS and the combination of seatbelt would have held them in place and no such incident would have occurred. So in all cases, uh, one of the solutions is, uh, is ROPS. And research shows that when used in combination with the seatbelt, ROPS are 98% effective in preventing death and serious injury in the event of a tractor overturn. Nevertheless, one-third to one-half of tractors still do not have these life-saving structures. So what are some of the options available to farmers? So first of all, uh, we always recommend talking to machinery dealers. Uh, most machinery dealers do have good knowledge of how to acquire uh, ROPS for your tractors. In the event that that's uh, not a possibility, there are other options. So one very useful tool is a second uh, item on this list. The University of Kentucky has an online ROPS tool. Uh, it shows you where to find ROPS for older tractors. It's been developed and maintained by Mark Pershowitz, who has spent numerous years of research in this area. Easy to use, provides very helpful advice to source older ROPs. And the website for that tool is shown at the bottom of this slide. 
Uh, on this next slide, it just shows an example of if, if you would have, for example, done a search for a Massey-Ferguson uh, Model 1040. It would have identified that uh, Loren machine uh, makes a two-post rigid ROPS that would fit that tractor. It provides information on how to contact that manufacturer and even how to help out your dealer in that. As well, there's notes at the bottom on just tips to make sure that your ROPS acquisition and installation goes, proceeds uh, properly. And a note at the bottom just to verify that those ROPS have met the Canadian CSA and American ASAE and SAE standards uh, that have been set up to ensure ROPS are adequate for rollovers. There is a challenge, however, and this was identified in a study done some years ago uh, between uh, the AgSafe BC organization along with uh, PAMI. And through that study, it was uh, titled 50 ROPS in BC. A number of ROPS were acquired and installed. What they determined was original equipment manufacturer ROPS average, had an average price of about $920. OEM stands for original equipment manufacturer, so that would be companies like Deere, Case, New Holland, and Kubota. Aftermarket ROPS, these are ROPS made by non-original tractor manufacturers. Examples would be Loran Machine, uh, Safety Cab, Barco, Hercules, and other companies like that. Average cost of those ROPS are about $1,852. Um, there's also the option of having ROPS custom built by a fab shop, and the average uh, cost of that was $872. However, research indicates that when, while most older tractors don't have a high value, you know, some kick around numbers like $1,000 to $5,000 values, when you're talking about putting a ROPS that could cost anywhere from one to $2,000 on it, it tends to hold back um, farmers from making that decision. So this study also uh, experimented with some farm-built ROPs and determined that those could be built for about $334, which makes them much more attractive to farmers. So in follow-up to that, uh, the National Institute of Occupational Safety and Health in the United States uh, developed an online ROPs building tool it provides drawings and instructions on how to build your own ROPS. And they designed it around bolted connections because there was a concern about the ability for farmers to properly weld ROPS. So there are designs available for a limited number of tractors in that regard. And the website is shown at the bottom of this slide. If you do go to that website, you'll see a cover page, something like this. Um, they've been nicknamed uh, cost-effective rollover protective structures or crops. And uh, on the right side of the page, you can see they've got some designs for some of the Ford and some of the Massey models. A fourth thing that's ongoing uh, with uh, uh, the AgriVita organization at the university and PAMI is working on a low-cost ROPS project. The objective of this project was to develop simple weldable ROPS designs that could be built right on the farm. The goal was they would be affordable, easy to access materials and parts, easy to build and install, and meet the regulations and the liability requirements. This research is still ongoing, but looking very promising. On this slide, this is an example of a certain ROPS that's been designed. And the key part of the design is to take the stresses away from where the weld would occur. If you go to most farms, um, you'll find that um, many farmers would prefer to, to do their own welding but the challenge is to make sure that that weld results in a safe ROPS. 
So on the, this, uh, these pictures show a colored scale and at the, the top of the scale a red color would indicate a high stress, green would indicate medium and blue would indicate low stress. So what you can see on here is that wherever there's a welded connection, the stresses are typically blue, maybe green, but definitely not red. The only place where a red stress is seen in this uh, simulation of a load that would occur on a rollover is actually on a piece of, of uh, prefabricated metal. So that's the design which has uh, shown great promise and an example of what the drawings would look like are shown here. So PAMI has run uh, about uh, a number of um, trials with certain farmers and so far everything is looking promising and more research is ongoing. So in addition to those four resources to acquire ROPS, uh, there's resources on how to safely operate tractors and other farm equipment. So one of them shown here is the Canadian Centre for Health and Safety in Agriculture Farm Safety Audit Tool. It's a management tool to minimize risk of injury and maximize productivity and profitability. It uses a checklist system and to access that, the website is shown at the bottom of this page. There's a second resource also available through the Ag Health and Safety Network. And this is uh, focused on ROPS and rollover prevention strategies. Again, the website shown at the bottom of this uh, slide. So just in wrap up, um, rollovers and runovers are the leading cause of farm fatalities. ROPS and seatbelts will prevent most rollover fatalities and many runover fatalities. And if you have a tractor without a ROPS and seat belts, you should seriously consider installing them. So there are a number of resources available to help you acquire ROPS and to safely operate tractors to reduce and eliminate tractor injury and fatality. We want to thank our sponsors, Farm Credit Corp Canada, uh, Canadian Centre for Health, Safety and Agriculture, the, uh, of course, all of our U.S. colleagues who have provided a considerable help in this, the Ag Health and Safety Network, CASA, Canadian Ag Safety Association, Agrivita, and PAMI. And of course, the goal is that someday, uh, through the installation of ROPS on tractors, our goal is there will be no fatalities from tractor rollovers on Canadian farms. Thank you. If anybody has any questions, they can uh, put them in the, the chat box at the bottom of the screen. Well, thank you everybody for joining us. If you are interested in any of the resources that you saw on this PowerPoint, uh, please contact us if you're not able to, to access them yourself online. We can make sure that you get the proper links. And uh, if there's anything that we can provide you from the network as far as our paper copies of some of the resources, um, please let us know that as well. Thank you.